Why hello there. So recently I've been playing around with GV Studio a lot. It is a program that lets you make Game Boy games. Like actual Game Boy games that will play on a Game Boy. Problem is, given that that's what it does, it is fairly restrictive, which isn't a problem most of the time. After all, restrictions do foster creativity. However, I have been having a bit of an issue with the limited resources you're allowed to have for making your game. Basically, in each scene you are allowed nine actors, which are all the things that move around, but also anything that you interact with by walking up to it and pushing a button, and nine triggers, which are just a thing that automatically activates when you walk over it. But if you see this room, it seems like we have more than nine things that you can walk up to and push a button. And number 12. Yes, I can't believe how many things there are either. So, it seems like we have 12 actors on these boxes and another three for these ghosts that are wandering around. So, we kind of have 15 actors in this one room. But maybe we should look in the next room. So, this room is larger and once again, we've got a lot of boxes. And once again, if you click on the boxes, they all have a unique dialogue that they give you. And 16. Yes, that is a lot of interactable objects. So basically, we have 16 interactable objects in this room, plus those four ghosts roaming around. So effectively, this room has 20 actors in it, which is more than the combined total of actors and triggers that you can have in the game. Now, would you like to know how I accomplished this? I'm guessing you do. It's probably why you clicked on the video. So, for that, let's take a little bit of a look under the hood. So, here we are back in the first room, but things look a little different. As you can see, the room is divided into two sectors with a uh, little divider in the center. Now, normally what happens is all of these boxes here are not actually sprites in the game, they are just part of the background layer. And there is usually a transparent sprite, which is just put on top of them which you can't see, obviously, because it's transparent. But in this case, I have replaced that with these lit up tops of the boxes. So as you can see here, we have our objects, which are interactable. Yes, just like normal. And then when we cross, these ones light up and they become interactable. So basically what we have here is six actors that are just swapping places and performing the function of 12. But let's go check in the other room. Setup in here is a little different, but similar. We have four sectors this time, and when you enter each sector, all of the objects within that sector light up. We also have this guy here in the center, who is just a visual representation of something that's going on behind the scenes, but we will get to him later. First, why don't we take more of an in-depth look at what's going on here? All right, so here we are in GB Studio looking at the first room. As you can see, and as previously stated, the objects are actually just part of the background with these transparent sprites put on top of them. And we have our two triggers running down the center of the room. All right, so let's look at what happens when you step on this trigger. So first it checks the sector variable to make sure it isn't currently active. And if it isn't, it changes the sector variable to one. Then it executes all of these move actions which move all of the actors to their new positions on the other side of the room. The left trigger does the same thing basically, except it checks to see if zero is active. If it's not, it sets it to zero and then moves everything back to their original starting positions. And if we look at one of the actors here, we can see that what they do is check to see which sector is currently active. And if it is zero, it executes the dialogue for when it's on this side of the room, and if it is not zero, meaning that it's one, it executes the dialogue for being on this side of the room. In this case, this particular actor functions as both object two and four. So when it moves over here, it executes the four dialogue. Now let's take a look at the second room, which is slightly more complicated. 
So in this room, there are only four actors, but just like in the first room, they have a set of events that run depending on which sector is currently active. In this case, each one has four different sets of events, one for each sector, which now brings us to this guy right here, which is what this guy right here is a visual representation of. This is the switcher, which is an optional element, but a convenient one. Basically what the switcher does is it runs all of the movement events. So when activating sector one, it moves all the actors to sector one. And when activating sector two, it does the same and sector three. So basically it just handles all these things for you so you can keep them all in one place instead of having them spread across all the individual triggers. And since we are using the switcher here, that means the scripts on the triggers are gonna be slightly different. So once again, first thing it does is checks to see if it's active and if it's not active, it changes the variable to its value. But then all it does is activate the switcher. Once the switcher is activated, it will check the value and then activate all the position setting for the various actors. Like I said, it is actually completely optional. It's just a little more convenient. Now, you may be wondering which of these two setups is better, and the answer is it really depends. The first step here is best when you just want to cut a scene in half and switch things from the two sides, especially if you have a larger area and you only have a few objects, but they are scattered far about the area. It's not as powerful as the other one. Like, you can see here that we have six actors to get 12 objects, but it's a bit simpler. Now, the second setup here is obviously better when you have more objects. We have five actors here, including the switcher, and that's giving us a total of 16 objects. It is a little more complicated to set up though, hence why the switcher is a thing, and does cause a little bit more slowdown when you're activating the areas. And also you need to be able to group your objects together like this fairly nicely, but they don't have to be all nice and even like this. They can be wonky shapes all over the place. This is just to look nice for the demo. And of course you could combine the two if you want. You could have this set up and uh, if you had twice as many objects on this side of the screen, you could implement one of these. Really, it's up to you. These are just ideas. Feel free to implement them however you want. But now let's take a uh, look back at the actual demo with uh, the new knowledge that we possess. All right, now that we understand a little bit better how this works, let's once again look at this. So we're here and all of these are active because I'm on this side of the room. And I move over here and they are no longer active. And these are. And when you cross between one side and the other, it is basically unnoticeable that you are changing anything. Same goes for here. Once again, you may notice a slight delay when you cross into a new area, but other than that, no one will be any the wiser that you are secretly moving things around. All right, so thanks for watching. You can play this game in your browser and download the GB Studio files if you'd like at the link provided in the description. And if you have enjoyed this video, please uh, consider hitting that like button and maybe subscribe. Check out my other content. I have both fun and educational content. It's a lot of different things. You should check it out. Well, until next time.